So now without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce today's first speaker, Greg Conlon, SVP and Client Officer. Greg, you have the floor. Thanks for the introduction, Ellen, and thanks to everyone for attending. Uh, like she said, my name is Greg Conlon, and I'm the Client Officer for the Ipsos Entertainment Cluster, which includes all streaming platforms, studios, and networks. If we haven't met before, I hope we get the chance to do so soon. It's been an interesting last year in content. While there is more of it being produced than ever before, the options for viewing have been limited during the pandemic. As this change in distribution has been affecting consumer behavior, there have also been a number of different entrants to the streaming market. This makes the way that we both measure audience behaviors and talk to consumers that much more important. On the Ipsos side of things, over the last year, we've used some of the rapid change as a chance to step back and iterate on our capabilities. The result of that iteration is an end-to-end -end research ecosystem across the entire content lifecycle, from pre-production to post-release, that combine innovative Ipsos solutions with subject matter expertise. Today's webinar is the release of two specific products along that life cycle, TV Dailies Plus and Content Promo Testing. And it's one of many webinars to come. We hope that you can continue to join us along each step of the way and that you enjoy the presentation. Go ahead, Dorothy. Thanks, Greg. Um, yeah, so what an exciting year we have in front of us. So on behalf of the team, thank you all for thank taking the time today to join us. At the end of last year, we came upon the New York Times article that had the best headline. Then was the year that everything became TV. If you haven't read that yet, I'll encourage you to do so. But the gist is that TV as we knew it is changing. Not only is everything becoming TV, everything is also becoming content. And while 2020 put most content production into a halt, there is still pent up demand and a whole lot of pent up investment on the line. Billions of dollars are on the table for streaming content and platforms. How or why? Because platforms are becoming studios and studios or networks are becoming platforms. Case in point, year on year, the number of original titles being produced keeps on growing and the ways to watch them are also increasing. But here's the dilemma for consumers in this explosion of content. The reality is that the 532 titles we just saw earlier is competing against movies, video games, podcasts, videos, images, tweets, all of these other content types. And that's a lot of choices that need made by a consumer. And that is also a lot of choices that you as a content producer, brand or marketer will need to navigate and compete against in just a single year. With that dilemma, we here at Ipsos, we knew we needed to further understand how people make content decisions. So we did our research as we should and came up with a framework. And with that research, we discovered that a single piece of content could satisfy roughly eight need states, as in people would watch, listen, browse, consume content in order to fulfill this need state. But everyone satisfies their need to be entertained differently, and that reflects in their choices and motivations. So for example, while someone may choose to watch Game of Thrones to escape, someone else may tune into the same title for a completely different other reason. And this adds another layer in this increasingly complex web of consumer content choice. In short, we need to think more broadly beyond whether a consumer would watch a title on what platform, we need to keep in mind that not only are consumers making choices about content, but also about the choices surrounding it. Will they watch versus paint? Will they listen as they study? These things. If it's not obvious already, each piece of content is competing for time and eyeballs for activities, media, and other things. And if everyone satisfies their needs differently, 
how can we put a finger on their choices? What we found is that it's really less about the content, but more about the context. But what is context? What factors into context? We learned that there are four factors to how people choose content. First is access, the how and the where. The next is who or the audience. Then we have the why or the agenda. And lastly, are the moments of truth to that choice. How do consumers get to know about the content? And these are what we call the attractors. Of these things, marketers have the best shot at impacting the attractors. How a piece of content gets into someone's radar. And today, we will help with just that as we talk about two solutions that could help marketers and content creators optimize how content is found and chosen. First, my colleague Josie Derenko will share with you how to make your content stand out among the many choices people make. Over to you, Joe. Thanks, Dorothy. It goes without saying that this past year was disruptive across all categories, but as Dorothy pointed out, you'd be hard pressed to find one that's been disrupted more than what, what the one we're here to talk about today. What's fascinating to me, however, is that it's becoming apparent this change was always coming for us, and 2020 just accelerated it dramatically. So how do we think about that evolution? And more importantly, how do we think about how we evolve the way we attract consumers and audiences to our content? When I look back at the history and evolution of creative testing, it's almost shocking to think that we once crammed hundreds of people into a theater, handed them popcorn, and perhaps they even shared that popcorn, and surveyed them directly. Of course, times do change, and with the rise of the internet brought an easier, more efficient way to screen creative online. But with today's explosion of choices and the large-scale fragmentation in the way we can reach consumers across platforms, across devices, in different places everywhere across the world, having them evaluate creative in a vacuum is just simply not reflective of today's world. And as a result, it's not reflective of predictive of their future behavior. The way consumers choose and watch content has evolved, and so has the way in which we reach and attract them to our content. Measuring that creative prior to any airing must evolve as well. The reality is that consumer attention just doesn't scrutinize based on category anymore. We are hit with thousands of messages a day, and we just simply don't have the time or the energy to sift through each one. Simply put, it's turned into a war for eyeballs, and everyone, regardless of category, regardless of vertical, is fighting for that attention. Great creative, simply put, is really the only weapon we have um, against those scrolling thumbs and that wandering attention spans. Creative quality alone has been proven to be the key predictor of campaign performance, substantially more than any other media factors, including buy, efficiency, placement, et cetera. Even more, creatively awarded campaigns have proven to drive significant gains for market share. When you combine these two unique factors together, it provides an ability for great creative to deliver value to the consumer and the shareholder. Now, when I, put, when I think about that in my head, it, only one thing really reigns true, and that's creative truly is king. Our approach to creative testing leverages our legacy as experts in all things advertising at Ipsos. That spans over 40 years bringing a deep and wide perspective into the how, how do we grab attention and motivate consumers and audiences to take action. When we combine this with our heritage and just being founded to provide, uh, founded as a company to provide entertainment and media expert, expertise, we've come together to provide clients with a distinct POV and how their promotion advertising can work harder to win these streaming wars and to gain that attention. So how do we think about promo and content creative campaigns? Our approach to creative testing um, is, is, is powered by Creative Spark. It's a flexible tool that's been proven to drive in-market outcomes across categories and verticals that is grounded in what makes great creative in today's complex world. That's a true measure of breakthrough, in the moment, passive emotional measurement that's grounded in principles of behavioral science robust and deep benchmarks and diagnostics that have been designed and optimized with the context and culture of today's audience in mind to provide the colored understanding 
to the critical why behind creative performance and not just the what. This fosters a system that goes beyond the transactional into one of continuous learning to fuel iterative learning beyond just the individual execution um, into the future. We leverage a single survey that is streamlined and easy on respondents to take away three KPIs that simply put answer questions around, does the creative stand out, grab attention in a cluttered media environment? Can it be connected to the title and or the platform that's sponsoring the message? What's the potential of that creative to generate that key interest in tuning in, winning that critical choice of how consumers spend their time and with whom they're spending that critical time and important time to them? And finally, with the dissolution of cable and the fragmentation of platforms fighting for their own individual monthly fees, the stakes of maintaining and growing loyalty is high. For any piece of creative, whether it be an individual spot for a title, a multi-title, a brand or a platform spot, we understand its ability to drive a long-term commitment to the platform over time to ensure our subscribers stay with us and stick with us. If we think about the first and primary goal of any piece of creative, that key thing in earning attention, we also need to understand the context in which it's competing for that same attention. Gone are the days of singular attention, whether it be other tabs, videos, that skip countdown that you can't take your eyes off of. Your creative is competing with a flood of distraction and view at all times. In fact, even watching TV, a recent Facebook study found that over 90% of consumers have their phone in their hand while watching TV. Simply put, clutter just isn't a buzzword anymore. It's part of the context we operate in and we must take into consideration when we're understanding any creative and impact our, our, our creative must have or is having on our audiences. So that's why I take you back to why I said creative is king, because it is. But at the same time, we also know that context is queen. Creative Spark understands the power of your creative with today's context in mind through a proprietary cluttered media environment that's specific, specifically designed to represent the in the wild conditions in which your creative needs to stand out. Our consumers unknowingly are exposed to a variety of different brand communications on different platforms across a wide variety of categories with the specific test creative embedded within. The goal is to understand if your creative is powerful enough to organically stand out and grab attention instead of being stated or claimed response around its ability to do so. Going beyond that cluttered environment, we use in the moment pass passive facial coding during that initial exposure to understand what specific moments in the creative are eliciting the proper reactions and at what time they're doing so. With the inundation of brand communications at an all time high, this provides insight into key lean in or hook moments to help us inform any optimizations of key scenes, whether they be escalations, twists, teasers, or anything that we can do to optimize in order to tell a more holistic and engaging and creative story. Lastly, this is a powerful diagnostic tool that helps inform future iterations of shorter form executions across different platforms to get the most out of your marketing and advertising budget. We understand that testing every, every single piece of execution and iteration just isn't feasible anymore from a timing and a budget perspective. So this is a key weapon in our toolkit that we can use to gain insight from other streams of research to inform iteration and learning. Now, once we have that captured, that precious attention that we all are fighting for, we know we have to be careful with it. Delivering a compelling and motivating story that's gonna induce the action we want in 30, 15, six seconds or even less is now the next hurdle. With today's limitless content options, we know that earning a simple intent to view isn't enough. It's all about choice and the trade-offs people make every day with those choices. We measure motivation through the same lens within Creative Spark. It's rooted in behavioral science and how humans make decisions today. It's an understanding of if your creative is gonna be strong enough to win the choice in a competitive environment of other options, whether it be shows, movies, platforms, or brands. And the key is then going a layer further, identifying those optimization opportunities to strengthen our chances of earning those key moments of choice, which we're all fighting for. 
Lastly, we understand that today's complex and multi-layered media, media landscape. It's critical to understand that any testing tool or platform goes beyond that transactional test-by-test -test solution and becomes part of a broader comprehensive system of learning. With Ipsos, our proven solutions are consistent, flexible, and scalable within that single framework that, that travel for content, brand, and platform creative. It's globally scalable, and it's got appropriate nuances um, across um, that speak to each category and vertical. We pride ourselves on leveraging our expertise to turn data into actionable insights. So just like our solution, no data is delivered without context, implications, or recommendations that are empathetic to the creative process. We don't deliver a pass-fail grade or an endless cycle of retesting and learning and retesting and scores, but we deliver insights that fuel more creative risk-taking and learning on how to improve the next time around. This is what allows for a broad activation that goes beyond that traditional transactional testing relationship and allows for a stronger bond between evidence-based data and creative insight. Again, I thank you for your time. From here, I'm going to give it back to Dorothy, who's going to kind of flip things over and take us through those first three A's of context in this world of endless choice. Thanks, Joe. So now that we have a better idea and a proposed solution, how to make your content get into someone's radar, we need to also unconfound the other factors to content choice that we talked about earlier. But if you are joining us kind of late, we will review that. So in our earlier framework, we learned that context matters to content choice. And our research revealed that while attractors is the context that marketers can have the most impact, what Joe just went over, access is actually the biggest contributor to content choice. And you will need to know how your marketing and your creative is performing rel relative to that driving contributor. Where and how is your content being chosen? Who is choosing them and what motivates them to do so? And for those questions, we have always had TV dailies as our solution. So just what is TV dailies? So TV dailies has long since been an Ipsos uh, product. It is a title level tracking service that equips marketers with insights on the context around their titles or content. These insights help optimize strategy to turn an unaware person into a viewer by telling you who's consuming your content, what content they are consuming, and what platforms or channels they're using to consume them. TV Dailies has started since 2005 and is currently in its 810th consecutive fielding week, and that's a lot of weeks. In 2020 alone, we surveyed over 250,000 people aged 13 to 64, and that's a lot of people, and that's a lot of content along the way to that established history. Since then, TV Dailies probably has tracked most of your favorite shows from the very first season of Grey's Anatomy, right when we launched to the final season of Big Bang Theory, and yes, even through the streaming wars of 2020. But hundreds of weeks and thousands of titles later, the core of TV Dailies is really to help you understand who knows your title and who wants to see it, so you can better evaluate your content distribution and marketing strategy. Through TV dailies, we learn about what the most anticipated titles are, what other content your specific title is competing against in any given time. Last year, other than the uh, usual suspects of 10 poll TV moments and content, such as the Super Bowl, two things are notable. Of these top 10 most anticipated shows out of hundreds of titles we track, people looked forward to watching Wonder Woman 1984 and Hamilton. You know what's common with both those titles? They were originally intended to be delivered or accessed through a different way other than TV. Wonder Woman 1984 was a theatrical title that eventually released to both theaters and streaming. Hamilton was a much celebrated Broadway musical that then streamed exclusively on Disney Plus. And this shows that access is definitely shaping what consumers will watch or do. 
Also through TV dailies, we get to understand the content that are coming up on people's radars that are being discovered in the plethora of choices people make. This is how we found out that in 2020, nobody would have bet on Tiger King being the runaway success that it was. This should make brand and marketers pause and rethink their TV upfront or new front advertising strategy. But TV dailies can, should, and would do more. For 2021, we're adding more to TV Daily to turn it into TVD Plus, as in TVD Plus Access, Plus Audience, Plus Agenda, and Plus World. I will talk through each of these in greater detail. With TVD Plus, we aim to track every original title from each of the major streaming platforms to better understand access. By expanding this content and platform footprint, you can compare how your single piece of content is chosen alongside other relevant content choices or platforms. With TVD Plus, we also expanded the sample so you can further hone in on audiences of interest, be that users of your specific platform or aware of your shows or underrepresented audiences you want to represent and reach with your content. And we also complete the full circle to close the loop of the platform and content choice so you can learn about how content is chosen to fit your audience's lives. Other than whether they would watch a title, we also look deeper into whether they will continue using the platform that content is on and whether that relationship has any impact on how that content should be valued or what is expected of your platform. This is important because subscriber churn is an issue with the streaming wars that perhaps concern you and that we are watching really closely and determined to crack the code on. And with everything now becoming TV, content is no longer bound by geography or territory. Many titles are distributed worldwide by different platforms. With that, we know we need to expand TV daily to beyond the US. With TVD Plus in 2021, we will do just that to help you get a holistic measurement of your title marketing performance in other markets, as well as understand the context of access, audience, and agenda in the lenses of culture and locality. We are excited about these additions to TV dailies, making it the TVD Plus context it needs this 2021 and beyond. And with that, I turn it over to Greg to wrap us up. Thanks, Dorothy. So what can connecting TVD Plus and content pro promo testing allow us to do? Most of all, it opens up optimization, both of campaign and asset mid-flight. For example, when there are indications an asset may struggle to break through in testing, you can obtain a read on the creative early in its flight to see if any optimizations made after testing help performance. If not, there is an opportunity to leverage the creative testing results and Ipsos as your creative partners to quickly diagnose and pivot as necessary. But it also allows for a consistent framework of measurement and KPIs, greater insight into the whys, and sampling and panel quality, especially in connecting pre and post. Next slide. So thank you so much for joining us here today. We're gonna to do some Q&A, but before that, I wanna point out what we still have to come. You'll see here the full content learning ecosystem that I mentioned at the top. While we've touched on the optimize and performance steps today, through TVD Plus and content promo testing, there's still more to come for both. Plus, we still have to get to, cre uh, to create and positioning. We hope to see you there as well. Thank you. All right, now I'm going to uh, read a few questions as I get them in here uh, for both Joe and Dorothy to answer. Let's see, oops. The, the first one here is for you, Joe. What types of ads are included in the cluttered environment? It's a good question. Um, so to mirror that kind of real world exposure, um, we grab a selection of ads that we actually have tested in our database um, across the history that we have. And what that does is allows us to understand the context and the performance of each ad that we have within the cluttered environment. 
Um, so it gives us great control. Um, it's not just a random selection or smattering of ads. It's, it's, it's true control over what we have included um, so that we know that any performance of the creative that we're testing can be attributed straight to the creative quality and isn't just a factor of the environment that it's placed in. Great, thank you. And this one's for you, Dorothy. Uh, for TV Dailies or TVD Plus, you mentioned that you cover the full content funnel now. What does that mean specifically? Um, that's a good question. Um, traditionally, TV Dailies um, focus on the title funnel. So that would be if people are aware of a title, you know, are they intending to view that title? With TVD Plus, we actually expanded the funnel even more to understand if they're aware of the platform the title is on, and if they are also willing to subscribe, sign up, or use that platform. So then it kind of completes the full circle for both content and platform. Great, thanks. And another one for you, Joe. Uh, is the facial coding that you mentioned included as a standard output with all analysis? Yes, it is. Um, so every piece of creative that we test has the facial coding module, if you will, included or baked in, because we do see it as such a key diagnostic to understanding the holistic performance, but also future optimization, cut down areas. Um, I also wanted to mention too, because I, I think I forgot to do that in the initial slides, is that it is, um, it, it, it's run on everybody within the sample set. So we are not selecting a small piece of that broader sample and leaning on them to be representative of everyone. Um, everyone within the survey um, is, is required to go through this. So it is a broad, reflective, representative, um, emotional measure um, across the sample. Great, thank you. And then one more for you, Joe. So what is your ability to benchmark performance across uh, industries, categories, and so on? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, what, we, what we find is that given the whole narrative and, and reality of the fact that we are competing against a wide variety of creative for attention, we have the ability to look at performance at a 30,000 foot view. So your, your performance of your creative um, amongst every, every, every other piece of creative out there. But because we start up there, we can also drill down deeper and provide context into any specific verticals um, whether it be shows, films, um, so on and so forth. So we have the ability to start high and drill down deep as necessary to provide a contextual understanding of how your ad is going to perform, um, regardless of the competitive set we, we, we find ourselves in. Thank you. And then the last question here, this one is for Dorothy. Uh, given that there are a number of different types of content each network, platform, and studio produces, how do you plan to cover it all in one syndicated product? So what we're going to be doing is really cover it with the original titles, right? Like of the major platforms. I think I mentioned that in one of my things. Um, and then, you know, like if there are upcoming titles that we need to know of, because obviously, you know, as researchers, sometimes the content producers are ahead of, you know, what they're about to produce, right? Um, then that's kind of like where we work with them on what we need to be tracking. Additionally, I think the full ecosystem that you were talking about, Greg, helps because, you know, uh, TVD Plus is actually a good continuation after the creative promo testing. So most of the creatives and the content that that team um, would be testing also makes sense for us to begin tracking to establish benchmarks. So there are a few ways to make sure that we cover the entire landscape. Great. Thanks, Dorothy. And again, that's that's the end of the questions that we have here. Um, just to note, we will be sending a recording out as well. And, and feel free to reach out to uh, any of the contacts that you see, the emails on the slide right now. Thank you, Greg and Joe and Dorothy. That was um, a really great presentation. And thank you everyone for joining us today. If we didn't get to your question, we will do so by email. And also you will receive an email with a direct link to today's recorded presentation. That now concludes today's webinar. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.